What if I told you that every climate change study the IPCC's official report scientists have ever done is mathematically perfect? That they took what they were given and made no mistakes from there? That the picture painted therein is one of human-driven global warming above all else? Again, no mistakes, no bad math. The conclusions of their papers are completely supported by the data. You see, it is precisely my contention that all those things are true. They made no mistakes in math. They took what they were given and played out a perfect science. Their work is conclusively showing that human activity is the overwhelming driver of climate change. Those things are true, but the conclusion is still wrong. What's correct is that the planet is warming. Humans are a considerable piece of the puzzle, and we have to stop polluting the Earth. The reason the conclusions of mainstream climate change are wrong, however, is because none were given the correct starting information. This is the core error genesis point, the definition of climate change in their model. There is nothing wrong intrinsically with defining climate change for their own purposes as being what is due to man. But when that is all you study, and you don't have the correct natural variability data at the outset, you don't need mathematical errors. You see, if the IPCC scientists like their prestigious position and their funding, they are required to study what is presented within the defined scope. And the scope defined here excludes proper information. The amount of climate change attributable to man is the total climate change minus natural variability. And for every single study used in the climate realm, the sun is limited to 0.1% variability in heating delivered to the upper atmosphere in a slow thermal coupling process known as the top-down stratosphere-troposphere forcing model. It alone has very little effect on surface temperatures, leaving an enormous chunk to be attributed to human activity. However, there are indirect thermal coupling pathways and lots of electromagnetic forcing pathways through the global electric circuit and geomagnetic systems. Hundreds of peer-reviewed papers have been released in the last few years, and they are excluded from climate science by definition. Today, the IPCC can only look at human activity. Natural variability is set, and the sun is not even allowed to be part of the discussion anymore. As for what is missing, those hundreds of papers cover how that subtle thermal coupling can actually affect the Walker circulation, the Hadley cells, and the upper jet activity. These play a role in almost every major oscillation, ENSO, PDO, AMO, NAO, NAM, QBO. I picked a few hundred of the best papers and simplified them in my book, and it still took 200 pages, so there's no way to go through them all here. But... On top of those things I just mentioned, there is the entire ensemble of that electromagnetic coupling, where the upper atmosphere takes a back seat to thresholds of forcing that are a little bit like the boiling point of water. Really not much to see in terms of change before you get there, but once you do, the situation changes completely. The global electric circuit connects the ionosphere to surface pressure cells, which dominate all weather, and the primary actor on the ionosphere is the sun. Rather than dwell on those forcing pathways or try to show you hundreds of papers, let's just show what we know about grand solar minima forcing, some other key facts, and how the problem presents itself another way. Scientists have confirmed that grand minima force north Atlantic oscillation negative phase. This brings colder temperatures due to upper jet position, but even if the grand minima comes soon, it won't overcome global warming. Scientists have confirmed that grand solar minima force ENSO negative, La Nina, which brings colder temperatures to much of the world, but even if grand minima comes soon, it won't overcome global warming. Scientists have confirmed that grand solar minima include higher cosmic rays, which brings colder temperatures via cloud nucleation and resulting albedo, but if it comes, it won't overcome global warming. Scientists have confirmed that the Beaufort Gyre is waiting to release a cold freshwater climate bomb, the record of such anomalies, but even if it releases, it won't overcome global warming. Scientists have confirmed that every climate model is underestimating cloud cooling potential, but not underestimating it enough to overcome global warming. Scientists have confirmed that melting Arctic ice disrupts the Atlantic Ocean currents, leading to cooler temperatures, but in today's world, 
it won't overcome global warming. Scientists have confirmed that grand solar minima cause weaker polar vortices, leading to more Arctic intrusions of their air. But if it comes, it won't overcome global warming. Scientists have confirmed that the period of global warming saw the lowest volcanic cooling in hundreds to thousands of years. But even if we get big volcanoes soon, it won't overcome global warming. None of those scientists made any mistakes either. But they also do not cite a single other one of the cooling signal studies I just mentioned. That's over a hundred papers in total on those topics, and some more I didn't mention, all coming to the same conclusion, that it won't overcome global warming. But they're essentially not knowing what the others are finding, the same forcing future all around them. And this really isn't their fault. They did exactly what their funding told them to do. And the overall big picture stuff is supposed to be in the hands of the IPCC and larger organizations like NOAA. Alas, the result is the same. You don't have to make a mistake to come to the completely incorrect conclusion. During sunspot maximum, we only get 0.1% more heating of the upper atmosphere, but we also get the walker circulation and oscillation modulation, 10 to 100x changes in x-ray energy and charged particle flux to the global electric circuit, which has now repeatedly been confirmed to affect the entire vertical atmospheric column, implying immediate electric forcing from space weather. The 0.1% upper atmosphere model actually shows a downturn in energy received during major solar flares, and this is because they aren't looking at anything except the upper atmosphere. So starting information of climate studies is wrong. The dominant solar forcing model at 0.1% is not only under-inclusive, but shows negative energy flux during the strongest solar energetic events. We've got signals of forcing popping up on the horizon, but nobody realizes that they're all going to arrive together when the grand solar minimum does. But I submit, we must stop polluting. Climate change is real. The planet is warmer and the other changes appear to be much scarier. The actual scientists doing the math made no mistakes and followed their mandate to the letter. They all come to the same conclusion in as definitive a way as has ever been seen in science. But they're still wrong.